This is the Galaxy Z Fold 3 5G. You can fold it from a tablet into a phone. It doesn't have the same love at first sight appeal as the Z Flip 3. The Z Fold 3 is more of an acquired taste. And after 10 days, I find myself craving it. Samsung announced the Z Fold 3 and Z Flip 3 at the same time. The Z Flip 3 follows a familiar form factor, that of a clamshell flip phone which has been around for decades. The Z Flip 3 cost $1,000, the Z Fold 3 cost $1,800, which is $1,800. The Z Fold 3 has a form factor that, until a couple of years ago, was something you only saw in a movie or TV show like the Westworld. The Z Fold 3 is by far the best implementation of a tablet that folds down to fit in your pocket that there is right now. But because it lacks years of people using it in years of refinements by different companies like the flip phone, there are things about the Z Fold 3 that are weird. It's a wonderful tablet that folds into this kind of weird, kind of awkward, kind of heavy phone. When it's closed, it's about the size of a remote control for an air conditioner unit. It takes on the same form as the Z Fold 2, albeit with a bunch of small improvements that just add up to something more refined. The Z Fold 3 is lighter, which I feel as soon as I pick it up, but it is still one of the heaviest phones I have reviewed this year. It's thinner and more felt than the Z Fold 2, but one of the bulkiest phones I have ever tested. It's more durable, the metal is reinforced, and you can feel that extra tensile strength when you hold it and interact with it. The folding screen, hinge, and body feel more like a single uniform whole versus separate features, which is a huge deal. The screen has better durability, and yes, there is still a crease, but it doesn't bother me in the least. In fact, let's cut to me for my Galaxy Z Flip 3 review. Let me put it this way. The iPhone has a large black notch that eats into the display. I'm bothered by it more than the crease on the Z Flip 3. The Z Fold 3 packs nearly all of the Android flagship specs you could want. The cover screen now has 120 hertz refresh rate and looks lovely. Heck, this phone even has water resistance and can be submerged up to 1.5 meters, about five feet. Remarkable. Samsung did all of this and managed to drop the price $200. Now, one indication that Samsung is sure of the Z Fold 3's durability is it sells a sharp pointy stylus thing for you to use on the screen. If you have an old S Pen, you can't use it with the Z Fold 3. There is a special S Pen for the Z Fold 3 which costs $50, though there's also one that comes with a phone case to hold it for $80. What makes this S Pen special is its retractable tip. In use, it rarely retracts all the way. Instead, it feels like it's relieving some of the pressure as I write or draw. There is a small arsenal of S Pen tricks like hover to magnify or note taking in flex mode. So after a week with the S Pen Fold Edition, how's the screen? Well, let's take a look. Yeah, there's no signs of wear or tear. I mean, it looks just like it did, whatever, 10 days, two weeks ago when I got the phone. Now the cover screen, it does not support the new S Pen, and that's kind of a bummer, because there are times I want to jot down a note or, 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 or draw a doodle. And this combo in no way replaces the inherent convenience that a Galaxy Note and being able to store an S Pen in its body provides. There are two selfie cameras, or, well, three, let me explain. So there's the one on the front cover, so I can use it to take a selfie. But then I can also use the main camera, I flip it down like this, uh, turn on the preview, and I can take a picture there. But then I can also take a selfie using this camera here. Yes, it's under the display. So let's talk about Samsung's first under display camera. The part of the display where the camera is behind has fewer screen elements over it, which you can kind of see when you hold the fold at certain angles. Think of it like looking through a window that has blinds on it. The under display camera is only four megapixels, which isn't a lot, but that lower resolution helps it see through and around those screen elements. 
and Samsung applies some AI processing to improve the overall image quality. Now here are a few selfie photos I took. One with the cover selfie camera, another with the under display camera, and the last with the main camera. Indoors, you can really see how processed photos from the under display camera look. Outdoor shots look a little better, but not much so. But this camera is intended for video calls and I found it works fine for them. The other benefit the under display camera provides is to reduce visual distractions on the display. There isn't a notch, there isn't a hole punch. Instead, you either see nothing, which yay, or if there is a bright color on the screen, you see this glittery stop sign shape that catches your eye and is actually more distracting. What's happening here is more, also known as screen door effect. And it's because there are less screen elements over the camera. But when you put it all together, the benefit of having a screen that's clear of visual interruptions isn't worth the trade-offs from this under display camera. Well, at least at this point. The Z Fold 3 runs Android 11 and Samsung's One UI 3. Blitz screen apps are more customizable. You can do them side by side or even in threes, you can move them around, resize windows, save split screen app groupings and setups. And like the Z Flip 3, if you dive into settings, there's a section called labs, which can make nearly any app optimized for the screen. Now here's Instagram natively. And here it is after I go into labs and force it into full screen, which looks pretty good. Flex mode gets more support in One UI 3. There are more apps that can take advantage of the Z Fold 3's half open position. Now some apps just move to the top half of the screen with general navigation controls on the bottom. Other apps like for videos or music place the playback controls on the bottom of the screen. Not every app is optimized for flex mode, but it is a big step up from the Fold 2. And I think apps still can go further. Also, continuity from the cover screen to the main screen works better. I rarely see the restart this app window pop up. So let's talk about a few regular phone drawbacks and probably the biggest one for me is battery life. The batteries on the Z Fold 3 are actually a tad smaller than those on the Z Fold 2. And I barely make it through a day. Screen on time averages about three and a half hours, which isn't great. And yes, I could drop the Z Fold 3's refresh rate to 60 Hertz and reduce the brightness even more, but still. There isn't any dust resistance, and in my use, this hasn't been an issue, but I suppose if you were taking this to the beach or on a hike or, well, anywhere there's potential for small particles to interact with this phone, I'd just say, be careful. Like, this would not be a good phone for Salt Bay. The screens and finish on the body look great, but pick up fingerprint smudges so easily, I am always wiping it clean. The Z Fold 3 has B plus cameras instead of A plus ones, but remember you're paying the price for this phone to fold in half, not to have the best cameras. And for most people, these cameras are fine. The Z Fold 3 is essentially its own tripod. And like the Z Flip 3, I wanted to take more photos and videos just because of that flexibility. And bright lighting photos look good. Take a look at some of my favorites. The telephoto camera now has optical image stabilization, and I love having the option to go from ultra wide to wide to telephoto. Digital zoom is pretty good, and up to four times magnification, there is very little image deterioration. But when you get past six times magnification, things look, well, less stellar. Night mode on the Z Fold 3 is solid, but when you compare it to something like the S21 or S21 Ultra, images look a bit soft. Videos are decent, but suffer from image noise in all but the most ideal of situations. Take a look at some videos I shot with the Z Fold 3. At the end of the day, the Z Fold 3 is Samsung's best foldable tablet to date. It's far from perfect, but it's a remarkable showcase of technology and innovation. There are times where I wondered, why does this tablet need to fold in half? Or is this the best way to do this? And I think for now, if you want a tablet that folds in half into a phone, that the Z Fold 3 deserves your consideration. 
So for more on the Galaxy Z Fold 3, check out my in-depth written review on CNET. And if you're interested in getting one, click the link in the description. But now I wanna hear from you. What do you think about the Z Fold 3? Are you planning on getting one? If so, are you planning to get an S Pen with it? Throw your thoughts in the comments.